Hi everyone, Insane Monster here. If you don't know me, and I believe that's very likely, know that my name is Luca Pasqualini, I am Italian and I am a software engineer. I'm also currently a PhD student in the field of machine learning and an obvious game developer. Back in 2017, I made the map mercenary business for uh, the Rock the Cabinet co edition contest uh, for StarCraft 2, of course. And uh, to my great surprise, it ended up being one of the top 10 contest winners. Uh, there is also a video of Jeborino, for example, showcasing the map, and uh, you can find it on the description if you are interested. In the past, I've also made some tools for StarCraft 2 Galaxy Editor, uh, specifically a transmission library to make animated portraits easy to use, and that's quite similar to what we will be talking about today. A briefing library to easily make uh, StarCraft 1 style of briefings, uh, an AI library to help customize the AIs of uh, your game, and a credits library uh, to mimic Blizzard style credits uh, and for any map. Now, before we start, I would like to remind you all that I'm remaking, or to say it properly, re reforging the prologue campaign of Warcraft 3 Exodus of the Horde. I'm trying to deliver what Blizzard failed, and I think this can show uh, the great things that can be done with reforged graphics, with the reforged engine, so to speak. At least if proper dedication is given, uh, and this is something uh, uh, Blizzard really dropped the ball here, I would say. Also, if you like fantasy classical music, you can check out my Tima Symphony. Uh, it's a compilation of tracks I've been using uh, uh, to play a pen and paper RPG with my friends and mm, right now you can see there are not many tracks but I'll be adding more tracks in the following months uh, they are 21 uh, in total and they are all original and actually composed by my father well back to business today I will show you how to add lip sync to any Warcraft 3 reforged character that means you can take any blizzard made face animation and use it with any text or any sound of your choice this can be applied to any character having a model compatible with the given animation, of course, in any map. Uh, some time ago, some months actually, I believe, in a post on iWork Shop, uh, which you can find in the description, Blizzard actually answered a modder telling him lip sync was a functionality not available to modders yet. And, um, well, this is wrong, actually. And I would say, please Blizzard, the uh, Reforger is already in a bad state, stop spreading misinformation about your game. It really hurts it much more than necessary. First of all, we need to understand why Reforged animated portraits are so much more complex than the classic counterparts. Um, still in a workshop, I saw someone say that Blizzard should have added the false animations, just like in classic. The fake lip movement, I would say, of classic. Now, I believe there is a reason they didn't, uh, and uh, that is, they look bad. Reforged models are much less cartoony and much, much higher quality than classic ones. This is just a generational gap, I would say. Because of that, a uh, faked lip movement will just look terrible. I actually, a personal opinion, think they did the right choice going with true lip sync. And of course, uh, they use FaceFX, which is the same tool they used for StarCraft 2, for the exact same purpose. Well, with this tool, the process of lip syncing is very easy, and uh, that's the reason why it is a tool very commonly used in the video game industry, especially in the uh, AAA uh, um, titles. This tool actually produces uh, .animset underscore in-game files uh, to be used inside uh, the game. And uh, these files are uh, stripped down versions of the .animset files, which are the files FaceFX actually process. 
Um, these files contains the animation identified each one by a specific name and they are all usually grouped together under a group name. If my memory serves me well, uh, the extension was different in StarCraft 2 since they used the legacy version of Face FX. Anyway, um, you can find this anime set in game files inside the um, Warcraft 3 Reforged uh, storage, which you can open using Ladix Cask Viewer or any other tools uh, capable of open Reforged Cask storage. Uh, now you may have noticed FaceFX to be a very expensive tool. There is, however, a free version allowing only to inspect files without saving them, and I believe this is the right one for us. And so feel free to download it if you are interested. Now I'll show you how to find, extract, and import the anime setting game files into FaceFX. Of course, to do this you need both Warcraft 3 Reforged and FaceFX installed on your PC. Importing the animations into FaceFX allows us to inspect the files and check each animation name and group name. First of all, you need to open Ledix Cast Viewer. Then, you can click on Game Storage in the upper left portion of the screen. Now, click on Warcraft 3 Reforged in the dialog that appears. Open War3.War3Mod. Now open the folder underscore HD, open the folder underscore locales, now open the locale you need, usually NUS, which is the English locale and the one I'll be using through the tutorial. What to do now depends on what kind of animation you need. If you want a face animation used by Blizzard during the campaign dialogues, open the folder sound. Now open the folder Dialog and then the folder Face Animation. Now you can see a list of missions and you can select the mission of your choice, the one in which the animation you need appears. And you can export the anime setting game file of the character you need. For this tutorial I'll be exporting arc x 0 b slash facial animation slash proudmore.animesetting game. If you want instead to use a face animation employed by Blizzard in one of the unit responses, open the folder Units. Now open the race and of course the unit of your choice. Uh, for this tutorial I'll be exporting human slash hero archmage slash hero archmage underscore portrait dot sd dot anime setting game. Note that this anime set, which is the hero archmage one, is also compatible with the IFL, the IL archmage model. Now that we have both files extracted, we need to load them into FaceFX. So first of all, we need to open FaceFX. Now you can click on Actor in the toolbar and click on Mount Animation Set. Click Yes in the dialog that appears. Now you can use Explorer to find the .animset underscore in-game file you want to open. In my case this is proudmore.animset underscore in-game. Remember to set the filter in the Explorer to all files, otherwise the animset in-game files will not be visible. Now a warning appears, and this is to be expected. Uh, the warning is due to the fact that the in-game files are stripped down versions of the anime set files, which is the one you should actually be opening. Ignore this warning and press OK. Now another warning appears and it says it's detecting some inconsistencies. I don't know what this is all about, probably it's the same thing than the one before. And like before, just ignore this one too and click OK. Now the file is opened. You cannot see anything, don't worry, and it's the normal behavior. Just check the animation group name and, and you will see that there is a name in the group name tab. In my case, map Proudmore. Beside it, now you can see a list of animations you can choose from the drop down menu. Each one of these animations is connected to a certain sound file you can find in that map of the campaign. 
now we can do the same exact process for the other animation set we've extracted, that is Hero Archmage Portrait. Notice that the group name is now base SD and each animation has the name of the respected sound file for that unit response during the game. Please take note of these names because they are necessary to make our animations work in game. Thankfully, Blizzard followed an easy naming scheme for that. From my research, it appears that all responses animations belong to the base SD group. Also, the animation names are the same as the respective sound file. Uh, it's very interesting that the same holds true for the camp and dialogues animations. However, in that case, the group name always seems to be uh, related to the name of the character in the form map name of character. For example, we have map troll, map proud more, map grunt, and so on. I've not checked them all, of course, but I think these rules should be quite accurate and uh, maybe you can avoid the entire face FX steps of this tutorial in most cases. Now, we need to make all that stuff work in game. To have an idea of how that works, uh, we can open Warcraft 3 Reforged Editor or any Blitzer campaign map. For example, I will use the Prologue 01 map. Inside the map, once it's opened, go to the Asset Manager and check the conversation.json file. To actually check its content, you need to export it and open it with any text editor. Once it is exported, you can see that the file uses a list of string and consists in a list of triggers in which a certain order of dialogues appears. If we export the same file from an edited campaign map, and I will use uh, the, my Reforged one, we can see there are some differences, most reflecting the changes I did with the map. The interesting fact is that the edited only uses a relative animation set file path, why the original does not. This is probably due to some kind of relation set by Blizzard itself in their campaign file, which sadly are not currently accessible to us. I actually believe uh, uh, these conversation.json files to be some sort of output from the engine integration of FaceFX in Reforged. I don't know for certain, but they somehow appear to be like log files. I say that because uh, there are some campaign maps, a uh, very small minority, which uh, have not conversation.json files. But I don't know for certain. Anyway, if you just want to edit a campaign map and keep the lip sync working, you just need to reimport all the affected and you set in-game files into your map with the proper path as shown in the conversation.json file. However, we want to make our own dialogues, right? Then we need to inspect carefully these files to understand each component of the FaceFX integration, because in some way we need to reproduce this, in this integration somehow. The first property we can see is the conversation order. This just represents the order of the dialogue in the trigger. You can see that this is updated when you change uh, the dialogue order using, for example, uh, send transmission for unit or dialogue and so on. So all actions you can find in the GUI. The second property is speaker model and this is just the model of the speaker. I think there is no need for further explanation here. Then we get to a much more interesting property, which is the speaker name ID. This is the ID of the string containing the name of the speaker, for example, trial. The following property is the speaker unit ID, which is just the ID of the unit in the object editor of the worker tree. Sound file is pretty straightforward and is just the sound file used. Dialogue ID is the ID of the string containing the dialogue, which means the text uh, displayed in the subtitles for that specific sound. Now we get to something much more interesting, and here you can see why uh, FaceX fix was required. Animation label is the name of the animation in Face FX, while animation group label is the group name 
of the animation in PhaseFX. Then we have the animation set file path, which is the path of the anime set in-game file used for this dialogue. Actually, I believe the engine to search a certain animation label uh, under a certain animation group label inside that specific file path. If set to relative, the um, uh, folder used as root directory is the map asset manager folder. Finally, we have the animation set file path map relative, which is pretty intuitive and if set to true. It means that it will be relative as stated before and uh, if set to false it will use a, an absolute path I believe from the root directory of the game. Now we know what to connect but not how to do so. Many think there is no function in the editor to apply those properties and this is what Blizzard uh, said itself. But this is not true. Uh, user Solcius123 on iWorkshop found that there are three strange identical functions in the trigger GUI editor. If you want to find them, you just need to click on any trigger on any map, then right click inside the trigger and choose new condition. Now you can just select boolean comparison, which is the default selection for any new condition. Now you can select the left operand of the equality check and scroll up until you find three sound set facial animation label and those three functions are the key together with two other actions you can instead easily find using the GUI editor uh, those two functions are uh, set dialog text id and set speaker name text id which are used to um, define the string used as subtitle and as speaker name, respectively, for the dialogue. While those two are quite intuitive and uh, uh, it's quite easy to use them, uh, the other seems, well, bugged at least? Well, they are not bugged actually. The name in the GUI, the way it is displayed, is bugged. And of course their placement at boolean condition is wrong. But if you convert the trigger to JS, you can see the true name of the functions. And these are exactly the functions we need to set all properties we uh, found in the conversation.json file. And now we can just call these functions and the uh, connection between uh, text, speaker name, sound, animations can be done in the editor. Here you can see I've made some additional helper functions to load what I need for each animation set and that I'm be using in the new interlude I've developed for the prologue campaign, which is a completely new map. I've used the um, special place in the trigger editor uh, where custom code can go and I defi I've defined the, the JS function. You can just use the same function I did and change the variables if you want to implement that. You don't need to convert to JS an existing trigger. And to actually load the function defined here, I've used a simple trigger during initialization, in which using the action custom script, I call each one of these functions to generate all the references in game. And so having uh, talking portraits. And this is it, folks. You can now have lip sync characters in any map. There is no limit for that, of course, except for the model compatibility, which I would suggest you to investigate further because I think there is much more intercompatibility between uh, uh, an inset than one would be led to believe. And yes, it's a bit more complex than classic, for sure. Uh, but the results are worth the effort, in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe or just share it with other interested people out there. Goodbye and have fun modding anyone.